This is Flash at 20% off on the 13th yeah, of June 20 and 19 here on the reallibertymedia.com. And uh, I had a late start tonight to the, some of these uh, buttons confuse me and uh, I mishandle my stuff. So I think I'm being... Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, I think I made it through. I, I had the volume control on this damn microphone thing. Uh, it kind of eluded me. I didn't see, and I didn't see the uh, lack of green on my bars. I should have checked that first. Just assumed everything was going to be fine and perfect, and of course it wasn't. So, I think I'm being heard out there in the electronic world at last for your listening enjoyment today. And uh I'd like to say thanks, Grim. You're always there for me. I appreciate it. But I am actually learning to fix some of these problems by myself. And uh sorry about always being late and whatnot, but uh I'm I'm not a traditional kind of character I have a real hard time following rules and I suppose it shows in my radio podcast anyway let me say hi to the bots and bodies out there in the real liberty media dot com chat the, <laughs> these people are a hoot if you get a little bored and you want to see what's going on get a nickname and and check it out it's kind of fun anyway we have for your Typing entertainment this evening. We've got Barman, Cowboy Tech, Grimner, Moose Girl, Brackets under Brackets DC, Anti, Esmo, Chow Sedoni, Free and Slave, Graham Z, IB Don C, Java Doctor 2, Meister Brow, Miss Kate, Rome's Trust No One, Vanna White, Weather Dork, The Phantom. And well then, Beetle, Cyborg, Noodle, Dakota, me, Frumpy, Gromit, ha ha ha, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kiss, mm, uh, Smart As, and Van Meter. Yeah, I'm. I must have uh, must have been playing with the button. You know, on the mute thing has a volume control switch too. I didn't realize. And probably handling it, I turned the volume all the way off on on the uh, on the part. So <laughs> it took me a few minutes to figure out what have I done now, because I knew I hadn't changed any settings. We've grown beyond that, and uh, I pretty much leave this computer alone. Hey, Cowboy Tech, <coughs> to um, use for the radio few games but I'm I'm not overloading the system anymore and things are staying the same there you go hey Donna and uh, tonight I've got a few links that caught my attention and I was gonna read one I started to on the, one of my first takes but I think I've changed my mind about that particular link and uh, there's some bad news for Vinny it's almost a shame Vinny's on the river right now because as we all know, my good friend Vincent wants us all to engage the Popo. Film the Popo and show everybody what the Popo do when they do their work. Now, here's the bad news. I'm going to post this link here. Because I'm not going to read the other one. I read it once. I didn't care for it too much. It was kind of disappointing. And uh, I'm going to go with this baby called that the Supreme Court just made it easier for police to arrest you for filming them and it just strikes me that just after Vinny's been on a tirade about this you know do this and do that and suggestions and things that worked once upon a time but the system always catches us and they decide well you know for the safety of our you know guys in blue anyway Here's your story on the Supreme Court. On Tuesday, the Supreme Court came to a decision which now allows law enforcement to arrest people for filming them. Wow. 
Traditionally, the First Amendment makes it illegal for government officials to retaliate against individuals just because they dislike their speech. On top of that, federal laws give individuals the right to sue state officials for compensation if they violate certain constitutional rights, such as free speech. However, on May 28, 2019, the Supreme Court created a rule out of thin air that will now allow police officers to arrest people in response to speech that they don't like. But here's the kicker. Law enforcement officials won't face liability when they arrest these people. Now police officers can target people they dislike with virtual impunity, which spells trouble for protesters and journalists that film them. The justices determined that police officers should not have to defend themselves in scenarios. I guess this is in Neves v. Bartlett. The court decided that individuals can no longer sue police officers for arresting them if those law enforcement officers had probable cause to arrest them for any crime, big or small. This includes speech that the law enforcement officers didn't like. Oh, this is going to have Vin, Vinny's going to, his head's going to explode when he finds this one out. And it says here, latest, New Zealanders reject gun buyback scheme after massacre. Brian Frazell notes the chilling implications of this decision. Because local laws are full of minor infractions, like loitering that are frequently violated without incident, police will often have to pretext to arrest people engaged in speech the officers don't like. By immunizing such abuse, <laughs> Neves may have devastating effects on demonstrators, press photographers, and anyone who wants to exercise their speech rights in public like the right to film the police or verbally challenge officer misconduct. Frizzell also highlights how the power of arrest is a mechanism of social control and can affect an arrestee's social life regardless if they wind up getting convicted. The power to arrest is a potent tool for suppressing speech because even if charges are later dropped, Arrestees must undergo the ordeal and dangers of being booked and jailed, and they may have to disclose the arrest on future job and housing applications, among other ramifications. The precedent for making officers financially liable for violating others' civil liberties was established long ago. A federal law called Section 1983 allows individuals to take legal actions against state officers who violate constitutional... <laughs> my dog just laid on my mic cord. <laughs> constitutional rights. The Neves decision gravely undermines Section 1983 based on some Supreme Court justices' fear that law enforcement actions during a legitimate arrest could land an officer in years of litigation. The key point in this situation is that Congress, not the courts, should be the ones to modify a law like Section 1983. If Section 1983 is deemed to produce a socially undesirable outcome, then Congress should take action to fix that. This latest decision shows how powerful law enforcement has become. Although they have legitimate functions, such as defending life and property, our federal government has given them excessive power to intrude on other facets of our lives. This case is a firm reminder that we cannot exclusively rely on the federal government to protect our rights. Hmm. And that caught my attention when I, I didn't even read the whole link because I was looking forward to uh, doing it live and finding out for myself the details. But wow, man, what what we're doing in this world is, 
I don't get it. I am so confused. You hear these things about constitution and rights and all this, that, and the other. And then you read a SCOTUS ruling, and the, the ruling says quite the opposite. If you look at the documents, the constitution was jacked in 1871, rewritten, redesigned, but they showed the public the original. <laughs> See? So they carry on two different layers of law. And then they call this crap deep state now. Oh, the deep state. No, it's the state state. It's all inclusive. It's all one big bowl of shit. And I, for one, cannot find the, the attraction to uh, government. And people have said, well, you know, if something happens to you where you're living, what are you going to do? Uh, and I tell them, I'm just going to have to deal with that cr with that problem when I come to that problem. I don't like to uh, sit around worrying about shit that hasn't happened to me as of yet. You know, worrying about the future takes me out of the present. I have enough time uh, thinking about the past, let alone what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, so I I don't know. I tease circ about it as as much as I can. Uh, I try to stay in the freaking moment I'm in, and when things go shitty, uh, I go with it. You know, I don't, um, hmm. I don't get excited about problems because sometimes problems turn into better things if you handle them properly. Uh, I wouldn't even be where I'm at right now in Denmark with Zurich if I hadn't had problems in life that led me to this situation that I'm in today. You know, because other people are involved in life. And when people make decisions, I let them have their way. I don't fight people about what they want. If they want me to stay, I'll stay. If they want me to not stay, I won't stay. And uh, when I was in Scotland, it was obvious I wasn't welcome to go back to the America. So I didn't. <laughs> And uh, that turned into all this, whatever the fuck this is. It's just really a, a quiet life in a, a rural setting and around people that are semi-sane. They they don't seem to be too awful concerned about what, eh, there go the Harleys of spring. Uh, they're not, well, of summer, they're not too concerned about what the other guy's doing as long as the other guy ain't doing it to them. So it's more of a live and let live kind of rural thing I got going on and it's really interesting to uh because I came from the city and uh I'm used to things like SCOTUS rulings and <laughs> war not getting along uh, people having problems with each other that kind of crap but that supreme court ruling just slapped everybody right in the face I can't see any they're setting this game up for years down the road because you know they're gonna train these kids in schools you don't do this you don't do that you, you gotta obey you gotta this and you, when I was a kid we were re rebels um, we were surrounded by information about people were against the the main the mainstream there were outsiders looking on hippies potheads all these names they gave them but all it was is uh, the the state wanted to put that control out there on us, and they did. It took them a while. They, you know, it took them a couple of con man jobs, like uh, 9 11. Oh man, that really nailed everything down. But now that you've got a nice enemy like the Islam's, um, <laughs> strap in. This thing is probably just now going to get started. Whatever's coming to us has been so slow and subtle. I don't think that uh, average Joe really noticed the chains tightening. And if you ask him, how do you justify all these police checks and the 100-mile no-constitution zone when the whole country doesn't have a constitution in the first place? They took that with the uh, Patriot Act. Nobody could read the Patriot Act, so nobody knew what the Patriot Act actually did. They just trusted government. And these fucking idiots, they, they sign bills they don't read. 
apparently. I mean, that's the, the gist of what I see. And then they get these nine relics, these freaking whoever the SCOTUS is, wherever these fucking people come from, to sit on top of the pile and shit on everybody as equally as they possibly can. And now we have um, so many laws that I've read that any American on any given day could be charged with three felonies at some level because we're... You know, they've got so many freaking laws. You're bound to break one of them just breathing. Anyway, let me get on to the next epic tale of excitement and understanding. <laughs> this one's called... Let, let me post this first. Ooh, I'm still fucking up on that posting thing. But I'm getting bitter. You guys are going to like this. For all you um, people that are pro-vaccine, you're going to really enjoy this story. I'm going to do it in my own regular voice. Seven reasons why antibodies can't possibly... Wait, that's not the title. Oh, where is the title? Yeah, it is the title. Why antibodies can't possibly provide immunity. There is a massive vaccine industry that takes in billions in profits. Based on the belief that if you have antibodies, you are protected. Here's seven reasons why that belief needs a rethink. One, there are numerous cases in the scientific literature of people succumbing to illness even though they had high antibody counts. And then it says one to three in brackets. Okay. In fact, some of those had antibody teeters 100 times higher than what is considered sufficient to provide immunity. On the other hand, there are people with little to no antibody counts and supposedly susceptible, passing through disease outbreaks completely untouched. Actually, the discovery that antibodies are not responsible for immunity was made more than 80 years ago by immunologist Dr. Merrill Chase. And his discovery was largely ignored by mainstream medicine despite a long and illustrious career and publishing more than 150 research papers. And then it says five in brackets. Two, according to vaccine logic, the more antibodies you have, the better. But in a normally functioning immune system, antibody production is tightly restricted, for good reason. More on that later. It's now common knowledge that vitamin D is necessary for a healthy immune system. But did you know vitamin D limits antibody production? And then it's, I guess it's referring to six. It begs the question, why? If antibodies really are as vital as we have been led to believe. And then three, the presence of prior antibodies has been found to enhance some diseases. It's called antibody dependent enhancement. <laughs> and so far, it has been demonstrated to enhance dengue. I don't know which fever that is. I've never seen it. Zika virus, HIV, Ebola, and others. Hmm. Four, antibodies are created in the body as a last resort. It only occurs after the cells have become infected. Remember the selling point of vaccines about having a primed immune system so that antibodies could respond faster. Well, technically, that's true, but they neglected to mention that even in a primed immune system, antibodies are still not called into action until after infection occurs. Therefore, it's a biological impossibility for antibodies to prevent infection even in a primed immune system. Five. By now, you may be wondering why the human body is designed to limit, restrict, restrict, or delay antibody production. 
There's a good reason for this, because antibodies are highly inflammatory and uncomfortable. Those unpleasant symptoms that you experience when sick are not symptoms of disease. They are the result of antibodies. Antibodies place a large burden on the body's excretory systems and, if not excreted in a timely manner, they conglomerate and form antibody complexes, which are rather large and tend to get stuck in the soft tissues and joints, causing inflammation and tissue damage. If you get arthritis after a vaccine or illness, now you know why. Antibodies. 6. True immunity requires a robust innate immune system, also known as TH1 immunity. This is the very first line of defense. As already mentioned, vaccines target antibody production, which is part of the humoral immune system, also known as TH2 immunity, and the last function called into play by the immune system. We can look upon these two arms of the immune system, innate and humoral, as being antagonistic. When one is dominant, the other is suppressed. So a dominant antibody response caused, exacerbated by repeat vaccinations, means that the innate immune system, first line of defense, is suppressed, leaving you more vulnerable to infection. It should be noted here that the disease known as AIDS is characterized by this very same thing, high antibody counts and poor function of the innate immune system. Also of note, studies have shown that cancer and autism patients have this particular immune imbalance, high antibody counts, and suppressed innate immunity. Boy, Mary would have liked this one. And seven, last number seven, antibodies are extracellular, meaning that they are active outside the cells, but cannot actually enter the cells. Although scientists are trying to genetically engineer antibodies that will do just that. Now, this is quite a conundrum because antibodies are not called into action until after a pathogen has entered the cells. And antibodies can only bind to antigens on the surface of the cell, not inside the cell. Now you have to rely on T cells to orchestrate the killing of infected cells in order to stop the spread of infection. This is the realm of the innate immune system, the one that is suppressed by repeated vaccinations, remember? Such is the natural sequence of events when a Th1 type response is generated, such as seen in natural infection. The natural Th1 type response is to eliminate infection via externalizing it. This is the classic disease symptoms we know so well, such as rash, fever, cough, mucus, swelling, etc. Th2 dominance inhibits this natural response, which inevitably must lead to either altered disease manifestation so, for example, the vaccinated person who has whooping cough may have a cough, but without the telltale whoop sound. Chronic underlying infection, inflammation, or autoimmune diseases. Disease. Let's just reemphasize that last point because it's really important and once understood, you'll never again look at vaccines the same way again. First, Vaccines are designed to stimulate antibody production, Th2 immune system. Second, antibodies cannot stop infection, nor can they enter cells that are infected. Third, due to immune imbalance caused by vaccination, infected cells harbor infection chronically, causing inflammation and autoimmune conditions. Fourth, person Show, person shows only mild or no signs of acute illness, but becomes progressively burdened down by chronic 
health issues. So what actually happens is that the vaccine has not prevented infection. It has simply prevented the body from expelling the infection. It goes without saying that such a state of affairs does wonders for the vaccine efficacy statistics since the vaccinated are less likely to show overt signs of acute disease and therefore less likely to be diagnosed or even tested. Meanwhile, chronic non-communicable diseases continue to spiral out of control. Now you know why. And there are references. Ah, oh, that's what the bracket numbers were. The references to who wrote the information, apparently. And there's a list of uh, all kinds of goodies at the end of this. If you're interested in that. Me, I've been saying for a long time. Well, I think I got it from, uh, who was it that started me on all that? Clint, Clint Richardson quit doing radio, but I listened to him, and he had other people that were in that mental state, you know, carrying that message about what exactly inoculations were and how they started. And these guys were talking about their their knowledge and opinions about them. And I, I like that. I, it made a lot of sense to me that uh, you don't stick a needle into a human being expecting something good to happen. It's just not going to work. And there's a few... Uh, hmm, exceptions to that rule where injecting something into you might save your life but to put it on a mass scale and say oh look but then you find out oh they lied about everything hmm what's new right the government never tells us the truth about what they do now we got no right to film the cops hmm got mandatory evacuations evac evac <laughs> mandatory vaccinations coming to California when it starts there it usually catches on because I think people are just indoctrinated with the state would not hurt you while they look at the state just fuck everything in the, in inside there's nothing they don't destroy they destroy business they destroy private lives <laughs> But they make a dollar at the end of the day, so they, they like their own work. <clears throat> and I've seen these memes about this uh, new girl they got, this Ocasio somebody or another. OAC, I think they call her. But uh, all this stuff about her is all negative and making her look stupid, and she's an idiot, and this, that, and the other. And I'm just not so convinced that when the when the media or the press or whoever, the state, gets a hold of something or somebody and spoofs them, that, you know, they're just doing it because they can. Nothing's going to come of this. You know, they've got their little threats. So oh, she did this and she broke that law. But politicians break laws every freaking 10 minutes. Who does anything about it? Start with your cops and work up. We're being had, folks. I'm going to stick with that one. I'm never going to give in and think that society is perfect because it ain't. The lack of society is perfect. We're like that little kid with that little cookie, you know, and you, you don't want the kid to, to have that cookie, but that kid's going to hold it, crush it. You can't have my cookie, and then by the time they're finished crushing it, Nobody wants it. That's government. You know, if they can fuck it up, they do. Anyway, let's see what other epic tales the interwebs have in store for me and you today. <laughs> uh, I found another monster about France. Let's see what we got here going on. Because, you know, uh, what's, what's his name? Trump. He's going over there to Iran to save those Iranian people from their horrible dictatorship guy stuff. Their Khomeini guy does. And, uh, you know, the Americans going to go whip a little freedom on those poor Iranians that are so oppressed and held back in society. And they're just going to lie to everybody. I mean, crying out loud, uh, Iran used to be Persia. Okay? And Persia and France have been... Jeez, they've been allies for thousands of years. They go back a long way. That's why you got so many Muslims in France right now, I think. But 
we get told 17,000 different stories about everything. So let me see. Did I post this here, baby, or not? Yep. Protesters mutilated by dictator Macron's goons march through the streets. Hmm. And it's curious because uh, I don't know, sitting here in Denmark and all, I don't see much in just what I see on the interwebs and movies and whatnot. I don't watch news or read news story. I don't read newspaper, you know, the uh, mainstream shit, all that Fox and CNN and ABC and BBC crap. But I don't know how much of the stuff that I read is actually originated from them. I probably don't get much. I think I do pretty good. But... If I'm ever caught misrepresenting something, I sure like to be the first one to know about it. Because like you, like anybody else on this here earth, I'm believing the things I'm told because they make sense to me. There you go. <clears throat> now, this epic tale begins thusly. The incredible thing about France mutilating protesters with what amounts to weapons of war is not that they are doing that. The incredible thing about it is that Venezuela and Iran, the current two big bad guys, have faced recent protests, and they don't do this. <clears throat> we are told by the Trump people that the time is now to start invading Venezuela and Iran to free the people from oppression. But why are we not talking about invading France? <laughs> we all know why. <laughs> Not only does France use brutal violence against their own people, gas their own people, and mutilate their own people. The French dictator, Emmanuel Macron, has a much lower approval rating than the leaders of Venezuela or Iran. If the Trump people are just really stuck on having a war with whoever, why not invade and liberate France? Several hundred people have shown up for the March of the Mutilated in Paris, protesting police brutality and demanding a ban on the weaponry law enforcement uses to control demonstrators. <clears throat> control demonstrators. <clears throat> people gathered in central Paris on Sunday, the day after Act 29 of the Yellow Vest protests, the demonstrators carried banners showing injuries such as lost eyes and limbs. Various protesters have received over the past few months and demanding a ban on the less lethal weapons used by police. Hmm. All in all, the event was attended by some three to four hundred protesters. A group of maimed yellow vests were also in attendance with each one carrying a small placard Highlighting the injury they received. I've lost my sense of smell. I've lost my eye at the age of 21. I was shot by, L and by a LBD in my carotid artery. Read some of the placards. LBD, Launcher of Defense Balls, is a weapon commonly knows, known as a flash ball which is used by French law enforcement during riot control operations. While it's advertised as a less lethal device, it shoots a 40 millimeter rubber bullet, a large slug capable of blowing eyes out, causing fractures and inflicting other serious injuries. Oh, there's more. There's not much more to that, but that's the gist of it. And... Wow, boy, this world that we're living in is on fire right now. People just don't, we don't get along. I wonder why. Why don't we get along with each other good enough to live in a society that doesn't require all this begging the freaking government not to fuck us with their shit? They do it in uh, Copenhagen. They've had, they've had their... Their freedoms have been silenced over the years. That's what I saw coming when me and Cirque were in Copenhagen. They had a... One thing is they're, they're really short on space. So they got that luxury of using that as an excuse. You know, we got to control the crowd movement. 
<clears throat> you know, the usual crap to to calm the the, uh, the common man down so he, he doesn't feel abused. They give him some logical kind of explanation. That makes sense to a statist mind. And then everything's fine. And uh, what happens is your free speech is only allowed within the confines of that there encaged area over there. So if you want to protest, you have to protest in a cage. <laughs> See, it, it stops you from uh, <laughs> stops you from making a point in the long run, I would suppose. You know, they do like to stifle us and keep us quiet, but they do it in in other ways that make sense to half the people and then irritate the other half so that they will have these problems in society. People protest. Hmm. Maybe the problem isn't the is the protesting in the first place. Uh, nothing ever comes of protesting, as far as I can tell, until the government starts shooting at you. And back in the 1970, when when they were trying to get the U.S. out of Vietnam, the protesters who were anti-war, they shot four of them and said, "Well, you still want to complain about the war?" And people kind of backed down. No. And then the Charlie Manson thing came along to distract people and put them, uh, put them in that side against the hippie. See these filthy, dirty hippies, Charlie Manson, and all that kind of garbage. I mean, I think they staged, they staged the murders. There was no murder. Nobody died. It was uh, government doing what government does. They're false flags. And if you look at the uh, the pictures of like. The, the house that the murders happened on, there's a lot of things about the, the pictures that don't make sense. Like uh, there was no um, people from the you know, rescue people. The people that were bringing out the bodies from the house were not in coroner's uniform wear. They weren't identified as anything. They had suits on. Oh, I didn't, I don't think the cops are, uh, even back then, the cops weren't responsible for moving a dead body from a building to the car that they're going to transport it in. But, you know, little details like that. Oh, <laughs> then a lot of people thought that uh, the girl, the one that, what was her freaking name? The one married to Polanski, Sharon Tate, supposedly had a sister because her sister surfaced after she died in the public eye for a period of time. And made the news. And all this shit goes back way before the internet when it was much easier to deceive the public with some pictures and a few lines of text. And it seems to me that with this new SCOTUS ruling, the government is going to be, wow, they're, they're going to be so in control at this point. Now you can't even, you can't question the police, you can't argue with the police you can't do anything they'll arrest you for speaking to them the game is over we're pretty much finished as a collective when it gets to that point but America's huge you guys got that much going on is it's spread out pretty well it would be hard to control a whole country like that but uh, they're arming the police up to do it and if um, Boy, I've seen so many links over the years. I don't know what to believe. Like the shut down Walmart um, stores. Why? Why would they do all that and cut off food supplies and, you know, uh, shopping for people that was making it easier for the public because they were being able to spend their money on cheaper products they could afford instead of going without shit because you couldn't afford it. That was what I saw Walmart, Walmart as. You know, get your second-rate Chinese shit, and, you know, there you go. And it's a better price, blah, blah, blah. But then they started to shut down the, the couple of the stores. I don't remember how many of them. And then there was rumors about different things being transported, uh, everything from guillotines to uh, tanks, mysterious activity. I think I'm going to do me a bowl and calm down a little bit. This Tonight's show, the information I've been reading tonight kind of was a drag. 
I didn't enjoy that at all. Uh, I did have some fun earlier with some crazy crap that I found on uh, mines, you know, to bring the stress level down, maybe get a giggle. But Frumpy liked it, <laughs> and that was about it. I don't have a big audience of approval out there in a reallibertymedia.com with the stuff that I... <laughs> Sometimes the crap that I post is a little over the top. I know that. But, you know, I believe in freedom of speech. And if I don't like what you speak or I don't like what you post, I don't I don't pay attention to it. It's not doesn't affect me. Um, being affected by what I read and what I see is a choice that I think I can make. Then I read these links on the live radio, find out what's really going on. The inoculations. For crying out loud, how could people not could you not know? It's so obvious that Whatever they're telling us, if people are becoming ill as a result of an inoculation, why don't they report that? And, and then they did. Then they said, well, you can't sue Big Pharma. And then they said, you can sue Big Pharma. And then they said, you can't sue Big Pharma. Who knows what is going on in this fucking world that we're you know, engaging in? It's, it's insanity. Ah. Uh, Hey, I only missed 420 by 19 minutes. I'm getting better. Anyway, oh boy. So, I think tonight's show is going to be titled uh, something similar to... Oh, wait a minute. I think I already came up with it. Let me see my notes. I've got notes with Grimner going on. So I can keep track of what I'm thinking. Government runs a profoundly sick society that believes it owns us. <clears throat> That's the uh, the title for tonight's show, oddly enough. And the first few stories that I read, those are examples of, of what government accomplishes. Um, geez, is anybody familiar with the Act of 1871? I mean, there's links up the wazoo about the Constitution was uh, attacked well, well, be, ba way back, way, way back before the central bank ever got established in the, you know, in the states. Uh, but what they did was they, after they did the Act of 1871, I believe, then came the District of Columbia, that 10 square miles of love and happiness that the world just couldn't possibly live without for a minute or two. Anyway, yeah, I was going. Just hold on. <coughs> wow, <coughs> good hit. But I got it like this: the state takes shit from us, then it passes a bill to make that shit either legal or illegal, and. Find a way to talk about that one on a solo podcast. Because hmm. my opinions about the way I see things are, they're not, uh, they're not like a standard. <laughs> there are not a lot of people that see the world from the, the standpoint I think I'm at. Um, a lot of people still show the signs of hope. You know, like, oh, the Tesla guy with his batteries. And what was it? The, uh, the last show I did, I read a story about a battery that's in a museum in a foreign country in, uh, I think, north, northeastern Europe, forget, I think Romania, and it's been running since 1950. But the way it was designed is goes against all the principles that we live by and all the science that we live by because everything we live by has been misrepresented to some point, some level. I mean, moon, moon landings? <laughs> now, there, now there's... Three other countries claiming that they've been to the moon, but yet, you know what? Nobody has any proof of going to the freaking moon. It's all stories and not even pictures. You'd figure with all this technology they've got, they have t technology that we haven't even heard of yet, but yet they, they can't show us that they went to the fucking moon, but they claim it all the time. And now there's a new thing I saw today. The Chinese are in a race with everybody else now to mine the moon. 
So apparently, there are people out there in La La Land that can't get a grip on we're lied to about everything down here on Earth that runs our life. Medicine, politics, um, you name it. It's all a bunch of crap. One of the things that irritates me the most about politics is no matter who's in power, they're always pointing at the other guy that was just in power or the other side. Look what they're doing. They use that old bait and switch, distraction, uh, secondhand story, maybe this happened, maybe it didn't, crap. And like a TV show, it'll go on like that uh, Russian collusion shit. That went on for fucking ever. Well, doesn't anybody really understand that uh, Trump was involved in Russia before he became the POTUS. He's been dealing with the Russians for years and years and years. And he's heavy in banking. He's a big thief. <laughs> Look at his record. Anyway, so his financial record doesn't seem to influence the people that support him. And nothing, from my, my point of view, looking onto the states, nothing changed. Oh, if we vote for Hillary, we'll be at war with the whole fucking world. Let's not do that. Let's get Trump. So, you know, the Electoral College decided to put Trump in there instead of Hill Dog. Hmm. I see the results as being pretty much the same. The And the body counts are still climbing. There's always a, a link or an article about somebody being... Uh, suicided or found dead or they were uh, robbed and their shit was stolen it's something negative because we're <laughs> positive doesn't go anywhere people like to complain and bitch and moan and oh we're suffering because this and we're suffering because that well you're dependent on the very people that want to put you in a hole I don't think government likes us. I think the government is not our friend, sir. But, hey, that's what I think. I don't know what other people think. I think some of the folk on the RLM make it pretty clear that they're not for this Fed. Or any Fed. Of any kind. But we're still stuck using what the fuck is available to us. So no matter how that how you look at it or how you feel about it, there's that other side of the coin that says, hey, guess what? You're not immune because this, that, and the other. Now, my thing is I married somebody uh, as a result of, hey, this is pretty good. I think I can do this. And we did our ink thing, and then we started to think about, well, you know, the state's going to want this and the state's going to want that. So we decided to get married to eliminate the intrusion of the state. And surprisingly, it worked. That was uh, pretty much what they wanted was um, for us to uh, you know, incorporate our straw men and make one straw man. So we did. And everybody's pleased and happy with it. And then I read all these horrible things about uh, illegal aliens and aliens and people invading other countries and wow like the Paris thing you know, the, the military are armed against the civilians using weapons because they're out of control what could they possibly be doing that is so out of control that they need to be shot that's my question uh, I don't know I'm not in France to visually, you know, take a peek and see it with my own two eyes. I can only read what's going on. And, uh, wow. Oh, we got some stuff going on on the reallibertymedia.com chat. I'm telling you people. Hmm. I was stalling so I could talk a little. Let me read a little chat here. Wait a minute. Let's start with and well then, last president who actually fought, question mark. Which president actually last really fought overseas? In Van Meter, I'm anti-war, but the furthest thing from a wuss. In fact, I prefer to battle the powers that be than war. 
with another piss poor peasant. See, Van Meter, uh, there you go. And I tell people all the time, I just soon not fucking fight. It, it never goes anywhere. And when I win a fight, a physical fight in my life, I have always kind of felt bad about what happened. What I did to somebody else, I mean, why? Because it couldn't control my temper and this, that, and the other. And things just go wrong when, when you come to violence. It's never for the best. So an act of violence is when there's nothing left to fucking say. And I don't think any deals are ever made as a result of violence. No, you're taking control of somebody by force. And you're shoving your shit down their throat. And if they don't take it, I guess you prison them or you kill them. And that's what society seems to have turned into. I mean, on a global scale, I, I pick on the U.S. because I'm from the U.S. I've lived in other countries. And the countries that I was in, it's so long ago that the, the country I was in visiting at the time is not the same country today, just like the one I'm from. Things progress or they don't. And uh, I think what I found out is that progress is the problem. Progress doesn't seem to be solving anything, if you think about it, in the right state of mind. I mean, I go down to the grocery store on foot by choice, and I see people with their cars, and I see them pull up to the gas pumps, and they're all automated. The thing I overlooked about this is uh, there's no attendant at the get, getting gas. And so if you don't have a card, you can't get gas. You can't even buy it. Now... I suppose you could go to the 7-Eleven where they have, you can walk inside and get beer and cigarettes and snacks and shit. Now, there they probably take cash. But, the you know, there's still, hmm, technology's coming. And uh, this place is so small, They I think they need all the jobs that they can manage to, to uh, create for retail and give these kids a chance to get their foot in the into something and get some experience so they can go to a better school and learn a better job but they go through the ranks here you don't just wake up in the morning and you're the president of a freaking internet site that everybody wants to use like what's that fuck uh, Facebook <laughs> and Facebook's buying up everything anyway so probably in five or ten more years we'll all be a memory that's long gone gone and people in the world that, you know, in, that, that engage each other will only know state. Nothing but state. Yeah, Van Meter, the state is begotten by violence. I, I understand that. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like you. I think that way. But most, uh, most people don't. It's the regular working class and, you know, the, the people out there running things. They don't have a clue. I think the, the thing that they're concerned with is them. As long as I'm not involved in that shit, I don't give a fuck what happens. Because I'm like that about, if it's outside of where I'm at, what the fuck do I care? I can't change it, but what I can do is not participate in crap that's, you know, pointless. Uh, <clears throat> life isn't going to treat me any better than I treat it, I don't think. You know, and then let me change the subject here. Grimner, Grimner was posting pictures earlier of his attempt at gardening this year. And Grim goes a step further. He saw some um, tree. It's got some bushes or tree with some fruit bearing on it. And he wasn't sure what it was. So he uses his internet site to ask people what they think. Hey, look at this. What do you? What does it look like to you? And Miss Kate thought of, hey, take it down to the so-and-so guy and show him. And because uh, gardeners and farmers and hang out at certain kind of businesses. Or they, you know, they're, they pass knowledge around in certain... They're not going to go to a bar to talk about farming or gardening. They're going to go to a place that sells the tools to do it with. There you go. Uh, that was good advice, I thought. Now, there's some advice you can get given on the internet that's not so good. Like Vinny, insisting that people 
videotaped their encounters with the police. And what I read was not good. And I didn't see a date on when this is going to go into an act. It's going to be enacted. Maybe I... Hmm. I don't know if it matters or not. It's just, see, I think that the threat of an act is way more important than the act itself. You know, it's like uh, if, uh, it's a bad example, but um, if my wife started threatening me, oh, you, if you don't straighten up, I'm going to divorce you. Wow. You know, that would be worse than actually being divorced. <coughs> I mean, that's that's the way my poor sick mind believes, is that the vibration of the words that we understand, the way we've been taught to understand them, and then people say them to us, and we have these instinctual um, responses to shit that we were raised with, taught from little being small. We don't know what, what our parents said today. We only remember so far back and then everything's just wow here i am you know and i've got 50 fucking 9000 years of doing this stuff so i don't remember being two anymore now i have a vague memory of being maybe three and a half or so with uh when my uncle came to stay with us and my parents and my my brother and myself and that's about as far back as it goes. And I'm not sure how old I was. But I know I was older than three, but younger than four. So, And there's nothing else. It's just that one incident with my uncle uh, jacking us around, with the, tapping on the window, trying to scare us. But Pop didn't raise no pussies to get all scared because somebody's rattling a window. And then I live with a, a door locker. You know, Cirque likes to lock the door. She's from the city. And we've got a dog, and we've got a cat, and we've got a me. And we live in the most peaceful place that probably exists. But there's all these rumors and all these stories, and people, you know, have their own personal experience. Somebody will eventually go off somewhere, no matter where you live. You're going to have a fuck up crack and murder somebody every once in a blue moon and it, and it hasn't happened here since we moved here except a foreign uh, other than Danish family had a murder in their house and it was so long ago I don't even remember what the hell I did read about it but it wasn't it, it wasn't devastating and I didn't feel threatened and whatever the fuck you lock a door for we, we have a glass door <laughs> So if if somebody wanted to get in the damn house, uh, I don't know what difference quiet would make if you're going to break into somebody's house and hurt them or steal shit from them. Uh, this isn't a cat burglar neighborhood. There's no rich people on this street. Well, what I would consider rich. These This is just, uh, you know, comfortable. Uh, I think rich is where they got the gates and the freaking little guy in the suit at the front gate with a gun checking your ID to get in the on the property that's freaking rich oh and uh I've made fun of goober many times but goobers missing we haven't seen him in a bit and I mentioned the other time I was on the radio that well he was saying some crazy stuff on the internet and I'm a little concerned because wow the way the like I read that link about the police you know uh, and what I've read about, you can call in on these anonymous tip lines and have people just fucked with, investigated, taken away, because you think this and you think that. Well, if he went to a, uh, a retail outlet and misbehaved in the fashion he said he did, and got that upset in a public situation, usually in a disagreement in public situation, the one that yells that gets the attention of the people around him was the one that's wrong. And it's my experience that nobody ever hears what got whispered to him so they get pissed off and act like a fool. But it's easy to die. I've done it to other people. Whispered horrible shit under my breath that they could hear, but the rest of the bar couldn't hear me say it. You know, in a, in kind of a loud bar, but the guy next to you, he can hear you okay. And you say something shitty to him, and you hey, you motherfucker. And then they, the bar sees him yelling at you, but never heard you start anything. 
that's governor uh muted again wait a minute oh uh, okay so no no we got pinging or not pinging but uh people chatting on the uh, wire rlm1 has a room on the wire uh and van meter smart ass is a bot that's rob's bot yeah grim's handling it but i'm getting clicks in my headphones when you guys chat on the wire i have to disable that i will do it at a later time <clears throat> anyway heck grimner says i barely remember this morning yeah see it's so so many things are just to me i just think we we're fed all this crap by society that how we're supposed to do this and how we're supposed to do that but they don't they don't go out of their way to teach you how information is absorbed into your whatever it's absorbed into and interpreted and reacted to and it's all so quick it happens boom in a split second boom somebody says something you react to it i don't think there's any decision about it you're trained you're indoctrinated just like I am, I'm not just saying you guys, because I got, I'm sure I have my own form of indoctrination, but it's more to the fuck this bullshit side than the uh, kissing ass and getting along. That, that's relative to where I'm at, I think. Uh, if I was in an uncomfortable situation in a living somewhere, I wouldn't stay there. I'd leave because that's those people's place. You came in after them. So they were already there. So if they don't like you, you're the problem whether you want to admit it or not. That's just universal. It's like being an immigrant. You know, like one of the black ones. Uh, but this is all done by government. People don't under, seem to get a grip on the countries that are suffering the worst from the illegal immigration are the countries that were financially involved in the wars that created the illeg all this immigration. Illegal. <laughs> so, and to me, and I know I married Cirque and all that shit, but there you go. If you don't do certain things according to the freaking state, whatever state you're in, then you can't do the things that you want to do. That's why we're not free. Freedom indicates that you don't need to beg John for a freaking permit to kiss your wife. But apparently... Uh, the state of Denmark doesn't believe that. And they say, hey, you want some of our Danish stuff? You got to pay the priper. So there you go. And they've, uh, what isn't there, what's left that doesn't need a permit or a license to operate it for your freaking own safety? You know, because uh, you do the crime first. So, you know, if Surf murdered me in my freaking sleep, I'm still dead, so what becomes of her after that ain't going to matter to me any. But people have been taught to, uh, for one, to kill each other, which is just completely ignorant. And for two, that you justify killing people by killing people. See, instead of, hey, you know what, we, we should teach these people to be nice to each other, and these are the vegetables, and the, these are the meats, and these are the things that are good for you and what you should eat. No. They poison the fuck out of the supplies. And they sell it to us at 20% off. And then we complain about it. Because <laughs> there's never a warning. There's just society does things in the name of government or whatever it fucking is called. And nobody says, no, I ain't doing that. Because if you say, no, I ain't doing that, then you can't do it. Oh, you can want to do it all you want. You can threaten people all day and all night. But in the end, the bigger group with the guns is going to, they're going to win. I don't know how that works or why that works, but it does. Maybe it's the intimidation of weapon. Uh, maybe that's the problem with uh, this freedom, this gun freedom crap. It's an, it's an old, they had to just let go of the whole freaking argument altogether and stop fucking whining about an outdated tool like a fucking gun. You know, like everybody can carry a... Have you... Uh, have you ever carried a, a rifle and enough ammunition to, to do any damage? It's not... I'm a small guy. So to me, that's a lot of work, man. I'd, 
I'd rather just get you high than shoot you. Unless, of course, I'm drinking. And then I might try to shoot you. But that's a different story, I suppose. One of my crazy things is when I drink too much, I get way drunk. And I'm still functioning, but I'm way out of pocket. I want I want to see what, if anybody's got a gun. <laughs> and, no, we ain't got no guns. That's the story I get told, so... Wow, because in my normal daily life, the last thing I would ever think of buying or using or for anything, a gun. Why? Oh, you could get attacked. Well, if you're close enough to attack me, I'm going to defend myself. And I haven't, I haven't needed to in so many freaking years that, uh, to me, it's normal to be nonviolent now as much as it was to be... Um, vicious when I was young because I had a, a little brother that was bigger than me and I was the smallest kid in the school so there was a sh you know there was a percentage of people that tried to take advantage of that name game shit oh shorty yeah whoa you're a smart you figured out I'm short wow you know what do you say okay so what that's it and when you ignore things in that fashion and you just don't let people harass you with the truth, whatever the fucking truth is. How can the truth be an insult in the first place? Uh, I had a taller brother, and I'm telling you, that poor awkward motherfucker, it took him forever to do things that were simple for me because I was little, I think. That's the way I look at it. And he had a year head, st you know, a year head start on, on everything because my father would start us at the same time on stuff. He was just... 14 months behind me. So my dad would pretty much like with uh, bicycles, go-karts, all that, that mechanical stuff. Uh, my little brother was bigger than I was, but he was always a little behind uh, on the emotional, mental age thing. So I always had the advantage. And as I grew up, it gave me that confidence to see tall people, big people, whatever that was supposed to be about, as equal. Because you got your weaknesses. No matter, I've got my weaknesses in life. You got your weaknesses. And preying on other people's weakness didn't really strike me as a, something to pursue. So I went, <laughs> I went to the art thing, and uh, instead, and wow, here we are now. All, you know, I've got a lot of experience in different stuff, but it, what I ended up interested in the most in the end, uh, well, maybe not to the end, but till about five years ago, ten years ago, uh, was the art. I had a lot of fun experimenting with it. Like Grimm's doing with his, uh, his gardening, I did that with glass and wood and paint and tools. <laughs> it's, it was uh, an interesting period of time, but now... I got Zurich and a dog and a house and all this other stuff and I'm my interests have shifted. I got calmer and less noisy, I think. <laughs> oh, who's got a message for Cirque? Hey Cowboy Tech. Cirque's not not home right now. She is at her sister's this evening. And uh I'm home alone doing the solo twenty percent off for all you fine folks on the real liberty media dot com tonight. And I'm kind of enjoying it. I know it's bearing horrible freaking bad news and uh, not having anything really good to put into the cake. But if there's changes like this coming at you, uh, I'm sure you're going to find out with, without me. But who knows? Maybe there's somebody out there that doesn't uh, that doesn't open every freaking link they see. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, but it's nice to think that... Uh, my opinions or my voice might enlighten somebody someday. You know, to the, to look, not to guide anyone, or, but hey, take a look at this. This this will definitely make you see things differently. Hey, Beetle, what's up? But, uh, let me look at my trusty... Not, hey, because my first thought is we know very little. Uh, and I'll use me. I should say I instead of we. But I do live in the collective, and I believe that if the collective had the information that I was given over my lifetime and could assemble it in a like a page, a one page of information, 
it would conflict with every freaking thing that's going on in real life. The real life, yeah, I know, huh? I was trying to just do um, this with Vinny, but Vinny vanished. Or not this, but I was trying to do 20 um, in a perfect world with Vinny. And then I usually had somebody on the dork table, Vinny sometimes, Mary. But uh, yeah, I ended up doing three shows. And uh, I don't know if it's too much or not. If you don't like it, I guess it's too much. <laughs> but uh, fuck, it's just life, you know. And there's so much bad news to hear that you may not know about. That I think is what I'm getting at. It's it's the lies, you know. Uh, lying to people, it, it always ends in disgrace, I think, in the long run. You know, but uh, if you if you don't get caught lying for a number like 20, 30 years, then it's cool. But anything less than say 20, <laughs> 20 years is the limit. So, and I'm not talking about, honey, do these pants make my ass look fat? Kind of lies. I'm because people are gonna. Well, if you told the complete honest truth when people ask you questions. All the time, every freaking moment of the day, you probably wouldn't have too many people to talk to. Because, you know, there's times where, uh, I don't know, what what would the right thing be? You, you say, have a nice day to somebody. Uh, they like to, to, uh, to say that because it's American to say it. But I do have, <laughs> I do have a nice day here, so I always do, and I, uh, where, what the hell was I thinking about that for was we get along so badly with each other in the overall, you know, this person doesn't like the way that person says this to, and that one don't like the way you say that or type or whatever, or your opinion about this, you're a Republican, you're a Democrat, you're a communist, you're, all these names got to throw around at people. And I just stick to one, dolt. If you're a fucking dolt. There you go. And if I believe you're adult, I'll type it to you and let you know that you're, I think you're adult. And if you're not one, then I'm wrong. But, hey, it's what I think. And there's some people out there in the world that want to take that right away from me to judge somebody else's behavior, you know, with my own behavior, and type about it like it fucking matters to anyone. You know, it's just... We just have opinions about stuff and interests about stuff. And some of it's important, you know, like, uh, oh, no, the cat and the dog are acting up now. Uh, some of it's important, you know, like gardening, things that we can actually physically do and help ourselves with. And we've got the Internet right in front of us and other people with experience so you can, you know, learn what seeds, what startup plants to get, all these little details that... I had to be introduced to because I was a city boy. So I never ran into work that had to do with agriculture. I was never a farmer. and But now, I've, and, but I've lived in a lot of houses with property, but nobody ever wanted to garden. No, it never came up. So uh, now that it's come up, because me and Cirque live in this little place, and uh, we have a little of experience at it. So... When people ask a question, if I don't know the answer, I, I let them know right up front. I don't freaking know. I'll make a joke about it so they know I have no answers. But if I have an answer, and I tell you I have an answer, I've checked that answer out, or I've done whatever it is that I'm, I'm trying to do, like the avocado thing. I started an avocado, and uh, I got the, a link off YouTube to see how it was done, and I followed all the procedures and the steps and the protocols. And the uh, the top never grew, but it had a, a root that must have been about, I don't know, maybe 15 inches long. And it was all wrapped around the glass on the inside, and I never really figured out what I did wrong with that particular plant. But I started some more. I figured, well, you know, if at first you don't succeed, don't give it up. You're not an idiot. You just made an error somewhere. Try it again. Maybe you'll not, you know, do that same mistake. So I, because I tend to do that. It's miss a step or skip a step. 
uh, Grim deals with me with the internet on it constantly. So he knows, I think he's got a personal, you know, uh, point on what I'm talking about because he's gone through it with me. Uh, in some ways, this I think we're just all capable of what we're capable of. And forcing myself to uh, pretend I know something, that isn't going to ever help me. But, you know, then it's kind of the embarrassment of being shown 15 times and it's just not sticking. It's not, you know, it's like learning Danish. I could learn Danish, but I'm going to always speak it with this horrible American accent because I can't do the Danish accent thing. And I do voices and all that kind of crap. But that's all made up stuff in my head. It's not, it's not real. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not trying to communicate with anybody in a serious way when I'm, you know, doing bullwinkle or making some crazy noise or sound. But if I was trying to speak a foreign language to a foreigner, to me, my foreigner, I would, it's just terrible because <laughs> I can't, I can't consciously do it that uh, quickly or whatever it takes. So we've decided that English is just good for everybody. And strangely enough, it is. A lot of people speak it, but uh, it's not the first or only language. Like I've told you guys, Cirque in the morning, she opens up her Danish newspaper on the uh, internet, online. And while she's chatting with us in the RLM, she's perusing her little newspaper. And sometimes I'll be sitting here and i got to mention to her, Hey, Cirque, so-and-so's talking to you because she's reading the article. <laughs> so I interrupt Cirque to do in her morning reading to, to tell her somebody's on it's just like a an annoyance you know a little game to play having a little fun with somebody in the morning in a kind of a mean way because she's really likes to read her, her news and she really likes her country i think or at least the the people in it i don't know what to say about that cirque is nice to people and people are nice to cirque uh, and when people aren't nice Circle, tell them, hey, you're being a butthole. <laughs> and uh, I don't think that's so bad. I don't, I don't think she does it in an ignorant way, though. But uh, the, the story was they were doing a train, and, and one of the train people, the workers, or the security worker, was being a, mean to a woman, an older woman. And so it got involved, and, hey, you can't do that. You can't treat that woman that way basically is the gist of the story and i think there's a lot of people on the real liberty media.com chat room just out off the top of my head that if uh, if an older woman was being treated uh, improperly by a security guard of some kind or another not police a security force some some private thing not armed but you know they're, they're trying to wield authority over some old woman i think that a lot of I would probably not because of the language, but uh, in America, I sure fucking would. Back at, you know, my own ground where I know what I can do and not do. When I'm not a guest, because I feel like a guest here. I don't feel a part of this. I feel like they let, they put up with me because Cirque wants me to be with her. And, you know, we're, we're a package deal. So that's, it's really kind of fun. I, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying my life instead of um, the things that I read on the internet that are sad and depressing. You know, the the SCOTUS is doing this, inoculations that, rape gangs and mutilations and cop killings and all that horrible shit, right? And then I come up with my, you know, well, I'm having me a good old time here, out here with Cirque. And... <clears throat> I guess it sounds like a braggy thing, but I'm just, no, nah, I don't feel like I'm bragging. I'm just saying that it seems to me being happy is a decision I made. I chose a road to, to go down and the things that I do are fine. I mean, uh, everything that you do in 24 hours is never going to be all fun. I mean, there, <laughs> there's a dog and a cat to clean up after. <coughs> Sorry about the coffin. I got a mute button. But it um, it click. I'll just use this damn thing from now on. Fuck it. I just don't like it. It makes this annoying click when I do the show. But coughing is probably worse. But I, I really like to smoke when I do my radio podcast. But anyhow, you know, um, hmm. 
I read a lot of terrible things, you know, and a lot of terrible things happen to people. And their possessions uh, take, con well, our, you, the possessions take control of us, you know. Because if something goes wrong with your possession and you need that thing to do this or that or the other, which is what a possession is, well, you got to repair it. Wow, well, here we go with that, you know. So not only did you have to buy the damn thing, but now you have to fix it because it broke. And all these things are planned. They're not by chance. And in the States, they're all bragging about, oh, cannabis is, or cannabis, hemp is legal now again, blah, 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 blah. And there's a few people on, like Mines or maybe RLM, that know about what hemp truly is and what it can actually do. <clears throat> but the, uh, the status mind won't accept it. You've got to have this freaking oil. Now, you can retool everything and you can grow enough hemp to fix this whole freaking planet, clean it all up. And, but you need to stop doing a few other things. And there's so much big money involved. And the players that do it, well, they get our support because we're held hostage. If you don't use their service, then you can't live. Wow, how do you fight a monster like that? Where are you going to? You can't win. I can't win. I know I can't win. I think this thing is just, uh, it's like a dead carcass being dragged down the street. And it's dead. But it's, they keep dragging it like it's not. They keep telling people, it's. look at how wonderful it is. It's not wonderful either. I don't think any government, well, maybe Croatia is wonderful because they got a leader. She's a pretty woman. Well, I'll tell you, they got a um, prime minister or president of Croatia. And you look at her and you go, yeah, I'll vote for you. <laughs> I don't care what your stand in politics is. I want to see them boobs. You know, so they got smart in Croatia. But I don't know what life in Croatia is actually like. I don't speak Croatian. But the, uh, the scenery is really nice. It's got a coast. It's warm. It's above Spain. <clears throat> and uh, even the, their leader, whatever her name is, really nice looking older woman. She's probably about 50, 50 to 55, somewhere in there. Works out, takes care of herself and all that crap, and runs a government. So, mm, but I like looking at her. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care for the government shit, but I mean, if you're going to fuck people, damn, at least boobs, boobs kind of help. I would. I would be more interested in, in that than I would the policy because if you think it through clearly, right? They tell us one thing and they do something completely different. We have a, a, a money system that's a freaking monopoly game. It's not real. There's there's no value to anything except for what we're told. And what we're told is a bunch of bullshit. And it's all run on second rate crap. <laughs> <laughs> it cracks me up. And, you know, we're, we're held hostage. Either do this or go live in the desert. Go get you a thousand acres in the desert, mister. <laughs> like Woody. Woody did a... Well, I, I know he doesn't mind me talking about it, cause he, but he made a link. He did a bike ride out in the desert you know, on his... On a, it was like a hill. Up and down some. Look, and it was really narrow, and there was cactus to either side for a lot of the way. It was a wild ride. I, I enjoyed seeing him do that because I ain't going to try that. No, sirree. I've pushed my luck enough in life, and I think I'll leave that up to you people that still want to do it. You know, See, I, that's what freedom is. If you want to go riding down a hill on a bicycle with a camera strapped to your head, that is cool with me. I'm not going to ever tell you not to. And, with, and my negative side would be to not look at what you video doing it. Not not telling you you can't do it. That's not freedom. <laughs> freedom is not having to ask anybody to do anything anyway. And then it's so misinterpreted because we've, get, we've got these uh, societies shoving this violence and how bad everything is, shoving it down your throat every night with the news or the links or the information and all the medical problems that they created for us. And they've convinced these people that they're ill. 
they made them ill. They make them sick with the food, and they keep them sick with the medicine. And I, I think if you're ill, even if you were aware of what's truly going on, the illness wouldn't give you the in, the interest. I don't think to be on an internet site, you know reading what's really happening I think you'd be concerned with your illness and it's a big huge business and it's it's not <clears throat> excuse me it's not necessary for us to live that way but it's happening so hmm and we're surrounded by people that will not listen to uh, input that doesn't have some kind of official you know they want to be impressed with uh, protocols and documentation and all this other shit it's it, I guess it's a lot easier to do it that way than to reason it out and just figure out what you're looking at and if you're told it should be this and you're looking at it and it's not what you're be, being told it is who isn't understanding what here you're being lied to. It's kind of obvious. I think the, the my folks at the RLM chat that I associate with pretty much all agree with me, or I agree with them, or however you want to put it. That's the uh, the gist. You know, that's what we make of this. That uh, if they told us the truth, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. And I I don't know how many ways there are to expl express that idea. But it's really important to me because, uh, you know, like Cirque is involved in the, in finance in a you know <laughs> in a foreign country, and well, she wasn't willing to leave that to come to America and you know do what I want to do. So I compromised and said, "Oh, okay, I'll stay here. That'll work for me." But see, there's that. Other people don't want to do stuff doesn't bother me. You know, I'll adapt to them. And but then when you come to like inoculations, I told her if ever, if it ever comes down to shit like what's going on in the states comes here, I'm not staying here. If they you know get oppressive and start telling me I got to do this and I got to do that every ten every freaking day, well, I'm done. Then I'm not going to live in Denmark anymore. I'm going somewhere else. And that could destroy the marriage if that should happen. But I don't think it's going to happen. I don't foresee that here. This is so small. <laughs> there's there's nothing here. And uh, that's pretty much the key to uh, success at this point in history. Is the people, the more isolated where you are is, the better off you're going to do. And the bigger populations are going to have all kinds of man-made garbage bullshit trouble. <laughs> like the illnesses, you know, Rockefeller medicine. Uh, they took the Rockefeller medicine link off. I mentioned this, I know. But the things that, you know, proved to me that the path I was on were, was the right path. The, the physical evidence is being destroyed by YouTube. They're claiming that the... Uh, the owner of the link took it away, you know, doesn't want it up anymore. Why? Are you out of your freaking mind? That's why she put it up so we'd see it, you freaking liars. But law has a way of, you know, making these stupid fucking things sound real and possible. But they're not. You know, like, okay, let's use the marriage thing. That marriage thing hasn't got fucking anything to do with the state. It's got to do with me and Cirque. So the only thing it's really got to do with is commerce. It's not about me and her. It's about our straw men. And uh, I'm a sexist, and I don't care. I say men. Women know they're human or live or carbon-based or whatever they call it. Uh, <laughs> me and Cirque, no, we're... We're a pa we're a partnership, pal. I'm just saying I was using it as a far fetched example, you know, of what could go wrong, but I don't see that. I see progress here in the local community, you know, physical shit. New buildings came up. 
businesses are operating. And but there's not a big greed factor. They're, the uh, people here they like to shut their stores down and go home early. They don't stay open, you know, on holidays. There's nothing. There is a the outside country has a story, or maybe not outside country, but somebody outside of the local area they have a grocery store in town that's always open every day but nothing past eight o'clock at night <laughs> you can't do the, it's maybe seven i think they've got a 7-eleven and a gas station down the road but i don't i don't do a 7-eleven that would be my i don't know i'd have to really be desperate to go there by choice so <laughs> The strange, see, my indoctrination versus your indoctrination. Hmm. Let's see, what did Beetle say? Ah, Van Meter says, Beetle, my buddy Harry got me to plug the uke into a wah pedal and an amp last night. Having lots of fun with that. Well, that's good, see, because art and music, I believe, music me and Cirque don't see eye to eye on so much, but the art we do. We're uh, we're both talented in in that regard, and she's got some edge. That little woman can do some incredible stuff with a uh, camera too. But she went to learn how the camera works and has taken you know classes to be taught this and that. And I never did anything. <laughs> I just did stuff. I never went to school. I tried to go to school once for a computer thing for like two or three days. It didn't they threw me out? So school and me never work, but uh, if I buy something and then use it, then I'm usually all right. Until it gets real, like into this technical stuff that Grimm does with uh, all this typing. Wow, all these things you got to keep track of to to uh, put a podcast on the, on the airwaves so people can retrieve it, get it when they see that. Hey, look, there's a link. I want to see that. And then they open it up. Well, it's got to come from somewhere. And it's been this much trouble for me. Uh, it took me years to get to where I'm at now because my indoctrination doesn't allow this to be easy for me. I don't know why. It's like a punishment, I suppose. Or maybe a, a, you know, it makes the scale level. Because I'm gifted in some things and other things I, I just can't do worth a shit. But doing the, the internet badly on the internet is probably one of the... <laughs> It couldn't be any worse. I mean, I, I guess it could be a leper <laughs> or, uh, you know, have a hair lip. You know, maybe I have male pattern baldness. I don't know. Something could go horribly wrong with life any given freaking moment. There's no promises in this deal. You know, you're here and then you're gone. Uh, some people just last longer than others. And now we've got all this information at our fingertips, and you learn about energy, you learn about vibration, resonance, and frequency, and then there's more to life, you know? There's more to life than my opinion of you on a Real Liberty media chat site, I would hope. And sometimes it's fun to play, you know? Yeah, Beetle says, typing sucks. Yeah, I don't like to type. I don't know what the fuck it is. And then when my typos, I started to wonder about that. And I came to the decision that even Hansel, people that type, that do typos, they're they're rule, they're just not that concerned with the freaking rules. They're saying maybe it's like he says he's all concerned with rules and all that bullshit. Watch him type. Maybe he's not. Somebody that's concerned with rules will make sure their type is perfect. Because sometimes when I want to make a particular point, I will read my text before I post it. And other times I'm just chitter-chattering around and I write two words backwards, <laughs> leave out a letter, something like that. But we all speak typo to a point anyway. So we mostly figure it out. But I'm starting to think that it's just a rule breaking. That deep down inside we don't want to be like everybody else and do what everybody else does. I want to do it my way. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we're just uh, don't pay attention to what we're doing. Hey. Ah. It is 21 and 42 after the hour. Hmm. Let's see. That gives me about, I don't know how much time. I'll just go up to the hour, I guess. With, I'm not doing too good on a, the solo thing tonight. I don't think. Uh, 
mostly what I got on my mind is just my local thing, and, and that's good. Everything's fine. Uh, the cat's good. Hannah's beautiful, like always. Uh, she gets a little excited and barks at, at, I believe. Now here, see, vibration and frequency. When me and Cirque are together in the same room, the room changes. When I'm home, like I've been here sitting here talking to myself. I got a TV on in the background. The dog has been on the couch the whole time, except for the cat came in and they got under my feet. But there was no barking. Uh, they didn't chase each other around for some reason. And I'm I'm going to take credit for that. <laughs> Grimner. But I'm going to take credit for the animals being calm tonight because that's me. And then when Cirque comes, the, the energy she brings makes the, the cat and the dog crazy. Because that changes the vibration from calm to chaos. And I mean it in a good kind of way because I choose to... To, I choose to do that, but knowing knowing these little things going into it, uh, going forward, I think is the word I'm looking for. It helps to define what you're freaking doing yourself. Not always pointing my finger. Hey, w look what you did. Hey, look what you did. Sometimes it's important to look at what I did, and I think the radio helps me to understand that. You know, this is just my illusion. <laughs> it doesn't doesn't have anything to do with anybody not even Cirque on certain levels but physically that's the difference is there's the physical you got to learn the internet was the greatest thing for me it taught me that th this physical world is different than the energy world it's different and there's nobody that can explain it to you because anybody that's ever tried to has been silenced or the material was hijacked and but bullshit was replaced in its place. We were told stories and fantasies, nonsense, crap. Now, I believe that because of the fucking results that I, I see. We're in 20 fucking one, one, you know, <laughs> 19, and here we are still gluing shit, nailing shit, and burning oil. And there's no reason for this. We should be using hemp as a means of manufacturing. Then shit wouldn't wear out. As quickly, of course, there you go. But this this uh, consumer society we live in, it's trained to buy a piece of shit every 30 days. And as long as they that's what they supply us with, there you go. So instead of uh, some kind of resistance, I think we tried with the dryer. I think that's a big step towards uh, putting, you know, putting it on. Uh, putting it down, stopping doing that. And then there's some things that we we require electric for, internet, lights, entertainment, shit like that. So, you know, there come the chains again right back on you. But we loosened them a little by getting rid of uh, something that wasn't good for us in the long run. And the, other, and the funniest part about it, we never talked about it. No, nobody ever brought it up. And... We each thought the other one wanted it. <laughs> so, you know, that's that's the, the thing that I got going on in life is she doesn't complain at me about stuff that bugs her. And I don't complain at her about stuff that bugs me like that. And when we finally talk about it, it's like, yeah, I don't want it either. Okay, let's get rid of it. There you go. Instead of always being on an opposite side of the uh, situation. So... Where we're so different socially, we're very compatible in uh, the way we think, not the way we express. <laughs> Cirque's all, all nice and sweet and everything, and I'm all, fuck you, and fuck them, and fuck this, and fuck that. But, uh, ah, it's a lot of years of indoctrination, you know, a lot of disappointment seeing this life uh, around me where people get fucking locked up for smoking pot. Or I had a lot of uh, people that drank in my life. And a few of the buddies of mine that, you know, overdid the alcohol, ended up wrecking a car, dying, you know, dying young in their young 30s. And here I was, you know, Mr. A, 
I walk and people laughed at me. Uh, hmm. Anyway, so I got kind of taken away think, thinking about that. But I've outlived so many people that did the legal thing. You know, they were all within the law, except for the excessive part. But, you know, driving well into, under the influence bullshit. But still, they were allowed to drink it. So instead of the... Hmm, this shouldn't even be available to us on certain levels, you know. As far as I think, not that we shouldn't have alcohol, but it shouldn't be a profitable business to uh, sell it to the public the way they do, where you have to get to them to get it. <laughs> you know, because if you're driving a freaking car and you're on your way passing a bar, I mean, it's got to be difficult to not... You know, be tempted to stop and have a beer. And then it'd sit there and actually, well, hey, five beers later. Because, <laughs> uh, not because I've done that. I've managed to never drink and drive. I, when I had a car, I wouldn't drink. No, no, no. When I was with somebody else, I didn't give a shit. But if I'm driving, no alcohol for me. I got marijuana. And as, you know, the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, tests that they have done what do you call those things uh, hmm. oh studies studies recent studies mind you not the studies they did in 1930 in New York but recent studies indicate that you're probably safer under the influence of cannabis driving than you are if you're not under the influence of cannabis because it does make you very aware of hey do, 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 do. behave yourself and you're not in a big rush so you're not likely to be driving as fast shit like that but we've been you know willie nelson all our lives to believe that oh you get stoned and the next thing you know you know you're 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 with the trudeaus fucking the rolling stones but uh i don't believe it i've never I've never experienced anything near what everybody else has smoking weed. But I always get a nice buzz. I, I mean, I enjoy that a uh, tremendous thing, you know, the buzz. But I, you can't talk me into doing anything stoned that I won't do when I'm not stoned. So, <laughs> the stones. Grimner's being funny. Oh, fuck a star. Yeah, star fucker. Or, wait a minute. Yeah, fuck a star. Yep, that's the song. The Rolling Stones. They're dirty potty mouths. And speaking of the Rolling Stones, that was not um, Jagger's band. That was not Keith's band or Charlie Watts's band. And they don't have the original bass player anymore. But that was Brian Jones's band. He was the guy that started the Rolling Stones. And they killed him off in 1970. And today there's a thing in the underground, in the London underground, that says this is where Keith and Mick met to start the Rolling Stones, when that's not what happened. And Charlie Watts even admitted that part. He said, no, 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 it was Brian's band. We all went to him. He, he called us to him. So, there you go. Oh, the weirdo, Bill Wyman, the bass player. But... That was a wild fucking band. Wow. I wonder how they got away with all that shit. They even got arrested a few times for drugs and this and that. But, wow. This is shit. <laughs> the Rolling Stones were a, uh, a big bit, bit of my history because of uh, the influence it had on the society I was in. You know, I wasn't old enough to go. I wasn't old enough to understand that they were doing all this stuff at the time they did it. But when I was old enough to understand it, the teenagers that were my cousins were telling me what all this shit meant. You know, What happened? Altamont, the, the Hell's Angels, they were the freaking security for 40 cases of beer at that <laughs> Altamont. And uh, I think there was one birth and one death and then a hell of a lot of people had their asses kicked. But... Well, you know, <laughs> security, you know, what is the price of security? 
And then whenever you get more than so many people into a place, you're going to have that. That's what we do now. We're, we're being groomed over the years to uh, act a fucking fool and get violent and shoot somebody. So be afraid of guns. That's a big thing. You know, be afraid of those crazy old guns. And I say, be afraid of the person carrying the freaking gun. <laughs> They're probably cowardly because they need a gun in the first damn place. So there you go. And then they go, well, you need one for defense. And this is the, the, the part I can't get across over personally. I ain't afraid of any fucking buddy out there in the first damn place. And if I felt that eerie around a person that I thought they might shoot me, they probably would. So I'm not drawing that into my life. So I don't need the, the weapon to defend because nobody's going to attack. It's all over for me. I'm finished with all that shit. And see, and then the common reaction to that kind of statement is, well, you just wait till it happens. Well, and I believe that these negative things that happen in life, you bring them on yourself. And with every negative, you can come out of that and find a, a positive that's even better than the negative. So I don't fear. I don't fear bad shit. I, hmm, I think just if it's going to happen, it's going to happen, and that's that. But you choose your own road in that sense. So if you're looking for shit, you'll find shit. And if you're not looking for shit, then probably won't find it. And the only other answer to it is uh, that one in a million, you know, shit happens thing. Well, okay, so what? I didn't plan to live this damn long. <laughs> I mean, freaking hell. I'm surprised I'm still here. Um. Uh, some people didn't make it as far as I have. So, the knowledge that I've got of the time that I come from, and now I'm in a foreign land to tell the story about America. <laughs> it's beautiful. Maybe someday I will, too. Because uh, I've told a few personal stories about my horrible childhood where I did terrible things and broke all the rules and disappointed all the adults but i had a freaking blast through all all of it and uh, <laughs> i wouldn't i wouldn't change my life my life did exactly what it did for me to be where exactly where i'm at now so i wouldn't want anything to be any different for because i would expect that i wouldn't be where i'm at and i'm pleased with it so 20% off has been brought to you by Grimnir at reallibertymedia.com. And uh, coming up on the uh, RLM this week, we've got Friday, we have Graham Z doing the Rocket Chair podcast, 7 o'clock on the East Coast. 11 o'clock, Grimnir is, I think he's doing uh, Balls to the Wall. Uh, Moose is going to festival this week. And Saturday, I come on at noon with the dork table. I don't know. I Maybe Mary will be around. She was looking for me last time, and I took a, I took a day off of... Uh, <laughs> I took a day off of radio to, to go uh, drink and, and look at pig. But uh, Sunday morning, Grimner comes on with the blues plays blues we play some trivia and then after trivia hal anthony comes on from behind the woodshed at 3 p.m on the east coast or on the west coast california time and monday night seven o'clock on the east coast grimner has uh grim leftovers the stuff he doesn't get to doing the music stuff on his uh freakers ball he brings it in and does it on Mondays on Grim Leftovers. And then Tuesday, I changed my time. I'm doing my In a Perfect World Alone. I'm going to do it at 8 a.m. in my in Denmark. So it's like 2 in the morning when I'm live. <laughs> it's a disaster for you guys. If, if you like it live, uh, then uh, you're just going to have to deal with Let me tell Cirque I'm still on the radio here. 
she's trying to communicate with me while I'm in in my podcast, but I don't want to make her wait. I'll let her know on, there you go. And then, let's see, I got to me. Then Wednesday night, 7 o'clock on the East Coast, Gramsci is on the Rocket Chair podcast. 7 o'clock on the East Coast in the PM. And then uh, next Thursday, 2 o'clock in the East Coast, I'll be back with another attempt at 20% off. So thanks, everybody. Uh, I had a good night tonight. I enjoyed my little stories and such. So I appreciate you being there to hear them. Good night.